As a cloud beginner looking to improve your tech skills, you might think that you need to pay for a cloud sandbox environment to practice your labs. You've heard horror stories about people accidentally leaving cloud services running and racking up thousands of dollars in cloud fees. But what if I told you that you could actually end up paying more by getting a sandbox account rather than if you just created the project directly on AWS? But even more important than that, what if I told you that working in these sandbox environments are actually stopping you from becoming a better cloud engineer, which is in turn stopping you from getting that cloud job? Make sure you smash that like button if you want to find out more. For those who might not know, cloud sandboxes are third-party software that can simulate a real cloud console. For example, a cloud sandbox where you can deploy AWS resources like EC2 instances, RDS, load balancers, and more without actually doing it directly in the AWS console. These environments help you build and test infrastructure for educational purposes. I've noticed that a lot of boot camps and courses train their students to use these sandbox environments, but I'm now going to give you two reasons why I think learning with these sandbox accounts is actually a terrible idea. The first reason is that using the sandbox account might work out to be even more expensive than simply deploying your infrastructure directly on AWS, and here's why. Most of the cloud sandbox environments I've seen usually cost between $15 to $30 per month. Let's assume you want to create some AWS labs, for example, spin up some S3 bucket to do some work with EC2. If you decide to go for the highest tier, which is $30, uh, for a sandbox account for three months, you end up paying $90. But what if I told you that you could simply create an AWS account and do the exact same labs and it will cost you $0? This is because the AWS has a very generous free tier, which means you could spin up the most commonly used AWS services and create projects with them for absolutely free. But look, I totally understand the fear of making a wrong move and racking up thousands of dollars in cloud bills, which is why I'm now going to walk you through what you can do to make sure you never receive a surprise cloud bill. Have you heard of a service called AWS Budgets? AWS Budgets is the simplest way to monitor your AWS spend and be alerted when you exceed or are forecasted to exceed your desired spending limit. With AWS Budgets, you can set up a monthly cost budget with a fixed target amount to track all costs associated with your account. This means that you can set a monthly budget for any amount, for example, ten dollars. This means you'll be notified once your AWS bill reaches $10. You can look into your account to make any changes you need to stop your bill from rising any further. But what if $10 is the absolute maximum you want to spend on AWS? Meaning that you want to be notified before your bill reaches $10. Well, AWS Budgets allows you to track a variable target amount too, which means that you'll receive a notification when your bill is at a specified percentage of the threshold. Let's assume your threshold is still $10, but you want to be notified when your bill is 60% of $10. You can specify that in AWS Budgets. So when your bill hits $6, you'll be notified. $6 being 60% of $10. This is one of the best features for keeping track of your costs on AWS, and I recommend you implement it right now in your AWS account if you haven't done it already. The students in my Cloud Career Acceleration program create high quality cloud projects directly in their AWS account. By using AWS budgets, their total cloud bill never gets above $10. You can compare this approach to those using those sandbox accounts we spoke about earlier that charge you $90 over the course of three months. This is an example of how fear and trying to save money can actually end up costing you even more money. The second reason I don't recommend using cloud sandbox accounts is because they might be harming your confidence and stopping you from developing into a more competent cloud engineer. I'll share a story with you to illuminate this point. But before I share this story, I can already tell that you're looking to break into the cloud industry, but you haven't been getting much luck. This is why I created a free guide called the three simple steps to your first cloud job. If you want to break into the cloud industry as quickly as possible and are tired of getting rejection from recruiters, then this guide will show you exactly what you need to do to be successful. Have you downloaded the guide yet? Make sure you download it now. All right, let's get back to the story. A cloud beginner wanted to join my training program. And so I asked them a couple of questions just to see where they were at and what their skill level was. They told me that they'd done a lot of labs in sandbox accounts. So I gave them a simple test or what I thought would be a simple task. 
I asked them to open up their AWS account and create a simple web server. This is the kind of task that you might be asked in a technical interview for a cloud role. So I thought it'd be a good test to see where they'd got to. I immediately noticed that they got nervous when they signed into their AWS account and seemed really confused. They struggled to use the AWS console and were really nervous to click the buttons needed to create the EC2 instance. Long story short, they failed this task. The reason they were so nervous was because they'd never actually deployed any real infrastructure in a real AWS account before. If you want to learn to drive a car and get your driver's license, you need to have hours of practice driving a real car on real roads. I believe it's the same if you want to break into the cloud industry. You need to create real cloud projects in real cloud environments. Will you make some mistakes in the process? Sure, but guess what? The mistakes are a big part of the learning process. As long as you have guardrails in place like AWS budgets, you'll be absolutely fine. The problem when you use these simulated sandbox accounts is that everything works perfectly first time round, so you never learn how to use your troubleshooting skills. But guess what? When you work in the cloud industry, things don't work half the time. That's what you're getting paid for, to troubleshoot and figure it out. It's really difficult to build this troubleshooting muscle in a sandbox environment. So if you want to save money whilst also building confidence in your technical skills and abilities, then I highly recommend you stay away from sandbox accounts and build real infrastructure using real AWS accounts. Just make sure you set up AWS budgets first to avoid any nasty billing surprises. But just remember, all of this is just advice you can learn in whatever way works for you. If you feel sandbox accounts are good, then go for it. I just want to bring a different perspective that you might not have thought of. But what are your thoughts on this? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you pro sandbox accounts? Are you pro deploying in real AWS accounts? I'm really interested in what you have to say. Leave a comment in the comment sections below. And remember, if you're tired of jumping from one tutorial to another without making any progress and want to follow a program that helps you achieve your dreams of breaking into the cloud industry by providing high quality cloud projects and mentorship, then check out what we have to offer at cloudcareermentor.com. If you're curious about what projects you can create to build up your cloud skills, check out this video right here where I made that covers the five projects to get you that entry-level cloud job. Make sure you watch it now and I'll see you in the next one.